Well, shook one near ten. Given a non-negative number, num, return true if num is within two of a multiple of ten. Note that a mod b is the remainder of dividing a by b. So 7 mod 5 is 2. See also introduction to mod. mod. Okay, so let's go over example cases first. So here we have 12. The closest multiple of 10 to 12 is 10. 10 is 2 away from 12. So, in fact, the number 12 is within 2 of a multiple of 10, in this case 10. So we return true. Here we have 17. The closest multiple of 10 to 17 is 20. 17 is 3 away from 20. So in other words, 17 is not within 2 of a multiple of 10. So we return true. Next we have the case 19. The closest multiple of 10 to 19 is 20. 19 is 1 away from 20. So in other words, 19 is within 2 of a multiple of 10. So we return true. Um, so this problem wants you to use mod. Um, and because not everyone might know what mod is, I'll do a quick... I'll explain why mod is necessary and why you can use mod. Um, so the reason, among many other things, uh, particularly in this instance, mod helps you essentially limit the stage of the numbers. Here's what I mean. So for example, these are like all the numbers that are possible, right? Um, actually non-negative, so it's I apologize for this, so I'll just try to write smaller. So the, let's, for example, the numbers that are possible go on forever. So that can be like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and so on. But the only numbers that we actually care about are the ones within multiples of 10. Um, for example, if we're at a number like 4, we don't care about any other numbers. The only numbers we care about are the numbers 0 and 10. We only care about the numbers that um, are the endpoints of the segment we are in. If we're on a number, um, if we have the number 9, the only numbers we care about are the closest multiples of 10, 0, and 10. If we're, uh, uh, for another example is 18, um, we don't care about the 0 or 10. We care about the closest multiples of 10 to 18, which in this case are 10 and 20. And the reason why those are the only numbers we care about is because it says within 2 of a multiple of 10. Those are the closest multiples of 10. If it doesn't work for those multiples of 10, it doesn't work at all. So um, we don't need to really need to check about other numbers. Uh, the reason why mod is helpful is because, as it says here, it's a remainder of dividing a by b. Another way you can look at that is that it divides, it makes it so that the number you have, the only thing that matters is dif the distance from multiple of b. Um, so if we do, for example, 8 mod 10, we'll just get 8. If we do 18 mod 8, 10, we also get 8. In both cases, this just tells us that our position in the grand scheme of... Right? If we're here, then 8 fits in here, sorry, 8, exactly. You can see that right here. It fits in there exactly. Um, if we're here, then 8, 18 is here because 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, they all align um, with respect to the multiples of 10. So by doing this, by modding um, our number by 10, we get its position within this frame. The reason why you don't see 10 here is because the remainder of 10 after dividing 10 by 10 is 0, so that'll just be here. But we can use 10 regardless. So if our number mod 10, so let's say that we already did n mod 10, and we got its position in this frame. If the resulting 10, sorry, if the resulting n is here or here, then we return true. 
If it's here, that means that it's within 2 of a multiple of 10. This is a multiple of 10 within the segment. This is a mul um, 1 more than the multiple of 10 in the segment, and this is 2 more than the multiple of 10. In this case, there is a hidden 10 here, right? The 10 will go away because 10 mod 10 is 0, but there is a hidden 10. And because there is a hidden 10, 9 is 1 away from that 10. Sorry, 9, yeah. 8 is 2 away from 10. Both of these numbers are within 2 from 10. The numbers that are in half position 10 will be here and they'll be accounted for. So in other words, we do n mod 10. And then once we do that, if it's less than or equal to 2, we return true. Or if it's greater than equal or equal to 8, we return true. Um, you might be asking, what if n is negative 1? Or what if n in this case is 11? But in both cases, um, in the case of negative 1, it's a non-negative number, um, which means that n mod 10 will always be positive, um, sorry, non-negative, because n in itself is not negative. In this case, if it's 11, 11 mod 10 is 1, so it would have been 1, which is within this range. So, I hope that explains what mod is. There are other uses of mod, but this is its application with respect to this problem. So we do n equals n mod 10. Next, um, we check if n is less than or equal to 2, or n is greater than or equal to 8. In these cases, we return true. If this is not if this is not whole true, we return false. Before we run this problem, I hope that you understand what I mean, um, what I meant rather, when I explain this problem, um, and I hope you understand what I mean when I say that mod restages or finds its position within this particular array. Um, and I hope you understand why that's helpful. Um, if you don't, please go back in the video, rewatch it, and then do it for yourself. Um, try just not, try just modding random numbers, um, and just try modding all of them. For example, if we, if I just, I'll just write the modded number in red. So 0 mod 10 is 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 mod 10 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is 0, and so on. You can see that these repeat, and it finds its position within that second, um, rather here. Um, if you look at the relationship between this, you'll quickly understand what I mean when I mean this. So now I'll just run our program. No, it is not n, it is not. I apologize. That. And it's all correct.